Poem by Teresa Cardiello Prelude My mother waddled around the kitchen, cleaning and cooking, and not interacting with the four little ones, crying, kicking, running, throwing. She kept her eyes on the clock. Ten o'clock was nap time. Theirs and hers. On this day, May 19, 1959, Mom opted to forego the much-needed nap in favor of starting a fresh novel. To mentally escape this penitentiary was more important than sleep. She was excited to start a new story, but truth be told, any book would do. The first squeeze came as she set the boys into their own little prisons, with bars preventing their escape. On that particular day, three of the four fell asleep, as the one cried and shook his cage. I kicked a few times, interrupting the flow of the story she was engrossed in. I then felt another squeeze, followed by many more, each getting more taut. The Beginning Just before my journey to the outside, I suddenly felt rather woozy, maybe from the heavy medication the doctor gave to my mom. I, of course, woke up for the intense and bumpy ride through a dark tunnel, like toothpaste being squeezed from the tube, I was briskly pulled out into the blaring white room, whisked away, cleaned, wrapped, and set in a plastic box. I laid alongside a dozen others under the fluorescent lights. It was a full day before I met my mom. She smiled as she held me, but quickly needed to nap. Someone took me from her arms, fed me, and returned me to my bin. The next five days followed the same pattern of seeing my mom for a few moments and being touched only for feedings and cleanings. On the seventh day, my mother introduced me to my father. I recognized his face from him looking through the large window, checking out the baby-laced containers. As my mother walked into the house, four wild animals ran by, laughing and poking. My mother held me tight and shushed them away. Siblings, a feral creature. I sensed my mother's exhaustion and instinctively wanted to be easy for her. When I was hungry, I would have to wait until my mom thought it was time to feed me. When wet, I learned to silence my complaints. Even in the first days of life on the outside, I understood that I was the fair-haired child, somehow set apart from the pack of wolves. Similar to my Tupperware days, I spent lots of time alone, but noted the feeling of being loved the mantra that was sung from the village, Finally, a girl! Childhood I was always a bit of an outsider, both at home and at school. I kept to myself as the nuns kept the classes in order. I just remember the feeling of being shuffled here and there, and being two steps behind, both socially and academically. One of the pack was held back in first grade. Actually, several had to repeat a grade. To my chagrin, this left me with one kin in my class and another in the grade above me. A memory. At my father's staff Christmas party, my father announced that his daughter could sing a carol. Being shy by nature, I walked slowly to the microphone. Of course, one brother ran up to join me. He couldn't bear the bright spotlight to be shone on me alone. I quietly sang as my brother loudly fumbled through the words. The large crowd laughed and clapped as my brother ran off. I walked back to my mother's side, where I burst into tears. Practicing cheerleading moves by myself, I froze as a ridiculing wolf walked by. The neighborhood flourished with Irish Catholic children. With an ice skating rink, tetherball court, and a plethora of group games, I was the last to be picked for baseball. Late Bloomer I took my sweet time strolling out of the fog of childhood. The arts beckoned me to join in something outside of my fantasy world. Once I went to a porn movie. Twice I got drunk, vomit drunk. Never did I smoke pot. Amour. I met my soulmate unexpectedly. Civilized, generous, funny, and sweet, he was the antithesis of my brothers. Through laughter, Tears, breakups, and a long-distance relationship, we eventually made our way to the altar. And then, one by one, we filled up the back seats of the minivan with little ones. House times four. My parents offered to help with the down payment until they saw the house and, more to the point, the neighborhood we chose. This house was not just a home. It was part of a village. 
It housed artists and anarchists, as well as the multi-generationally poor. Tricia, a ballerina, Mel and Marianne, formerly called Father Mel and Sister Marianne, although she was never a nun, and their adopted interracial children, Michael, a drummer, and Rachel, an artist. We met each week in the basement of the neighborhood church for a potluck meal, and several times a year we held a talent show, where, o- where the old German neighbor and our Japanese exchange student each sang in his first tongue. Painting walls, sewing curtains, planting fruit trees, raising chickens, and birthing babies. Life was full. We drove across the country to our second house, cheaply built with no character, in a subdivision rather than a village. Two years later, we moved again, five miles out of town, a 500-feet elevation gain. Mountain lake camping, sled riding, hockey games, bonfires. Now our neighbors were the deer, bears, and mountain lions. I moved to my current Victorian townhouse without my husband and with my kids, only part-time. Triple D's Decline, divorce, and death. He was always fearful of the month. February meant depression. Until the A and B days started. A days equals depression. B days equals mania. My inclination, learned from my mother, was to be stoic, to live with problems, to ignore. The signs were everywhere. I tied on my blinders. The threads to the beautiful tapestry unraveled quickly, dramatically, traumatically. One day, I opened my eyes to my new life. My beloved and I reached out to each other and touched, retouched. Soon came the unexplained bruising, the doctor's visits, the funeral, as if six months were painted with one stroke. Addendum Last month, I traveled south with my new partner. This experience will be an addendum. The major chapters were written, edited, and reimagined with a copyright date. The first edition propagated. My long-term memories are already formed. I welcome the new, the short-term.